And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everybody, it's Ryan Metzler here again. Just back from Gen Con and got a whole bunch of games to review. And the first one we're going to be taking a look at, or at least one of the ones we're going to be taking a look at, is Epigo. And this is an ab abstract by Masquerade Games. And Masquerade Games, a small company, I think they only have two products out right now, but they've made this abstract for uh, two or four players that plays in about 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, and it's suggested for ages 13 and up, but I think could be played by somebody a lot younger than that. Uh, it's a pretty good game, so why don't we take a look at what's inside this box, how the game plays, and what my final thoughts are on it as a product. So here we see the basic board. Uh, it's one piece. It's not a folding board. It's, it's nice and solid and fancy. Uh, I like it. You know, fits well in the box and everything, and, you know, a good utilization of the space. And what we have here is both players set up in the central line of the board. Now usually the players will place these pieces face down so that the other player doesn't know where they're placing their pieces and then after they're both placed they'd flip up and the X's get removed so they're going to leave blank spots on the board. Now that's the whole setup for the game and the idea of this game is that you're trying to push your opponent's pieces off of the board so you know maybe one or the red player wants to get this up here and then push the one off of the board. And the whole idea is that you're trying to collect three of your opponent's pieces. Now you're going to do this by playing tiles. And you'll see that they come with tiles. Uh, they have all of the numbers on them, so seven, four, six. Uh, and they all have arrows pointing. And the arrows, when you use these tiles, are going to determine which way you're going to move this. So looking from the red player's perspective, let's look this way. This would mean that the seven is going to move forward. Or if I turned it this way, the seven would move left or right or back as the case may be. So each turn you're going to choose three of these tiles and you're going to stack them. So I've got some pre-stacked. Let's say I chose the seven to go forward and then the four to go right and the six to go forward. And you're going to resolve these from the top down. So the six would go forward, then the four would go right, then the seven would go forward. Now, both players are going to choose these at the same time. So both players here have chosen them, and on the top of this they actually have a blank tile that you can put down to cover up your choices uh, if you finish before your opponent. So we put that on top, and at the same time both players are going to reveal their tiles. So red and white would both pull off their top tile, and they both played the five, and they both played the five moving forward. Now the direction doesn't matter here, especially since if both players play the same tile at the same time, so both players played the five first, neither of them gets to do that, do that movement. So these two would cancel out and we'd move, out, move on to the next movement. Next we see that the red player has played his three to move left and the white player has played the seven to move to their left as well. So in this case the higher number always goes first and the seven is going to move to the left or their left pushing all of the white pieces over. This isn't a problem because white pieces or either piece can push as many of their same colored pieces as they like without a problem. Three is now going to move and is going to move to their left, pushing the two over and leaving the board set up in this state. At this point, we're going to move to the next tile and you can see here that six is going to move back to their left, pushing off their own one piece. This is a bad move to make because obviously your opponent is trying to collect three of these pieces. So six has now pushed one of their own pieces off of the board. And it goes to the red player. Two now moves forward, pushing the white player's two forward. So that's kind of the game. Now, as I said, the objective is to capture three of your opponent's pieces. And you can do some pushing uh, by pushing your opponent's pieces and you can try and push multiple at the same time. But for example, the two for red could not now move to the red player's left because there are too many white pieces to push. And you can only push as many of your opposing color's pieces as you are using pieces to push with. So this two can't push all three of these. And even if the three pushed the two, they still can't push them because there's more whites than there are reds. If the case were that there were three pieces, you can now do this push as three pieces can push three pieces. And the resulting move would look something like this. The game ends when one player has collected three pieces of their opponent's color, and obviously that player is now the winner. Now, the interesting part about this game is one, that it plays very quickly, two, that you can use a lot of strategy in trying to predict what your opponent will play to cancel out their movements, and then try and make a future movement. So maybe uh, we have the twos here, and the red two could push off the uh, white two. So obviously 
Uh, the red wants to play a two, but the white's also going to play their two to stop that movement. Uh, but maybe we have even, an even worse situation here in that the seven could push off the two, as could the two. So who knows if the red player is going to choose seven or two first. And it's up to the white player to try and figure that out. So maybe the white player plays their seven, uh, thinking that red's going to play their seven first, but seven plays, or sorry, red plays their two, and now this piece gets moved off anyway, while seven moves their piece. Uh, so there's a lot of trying to outthink your opponent, trying to plan uh, for what they might do, but uh, you know maybe you have to guess multiple different aspects of the game. On top of that, the game comes with just an incredible amount of variance. Uh, and this is really the way that I suggest you play this game. So you can see this booklet here. Uh, it, it actually folds out and has several different variants. You can see along the top it says the Wall of Epigo Variants. And it really is a very large sheet and there are lots of variants on here. And what you do is before the game you choose two tiles uh, and you read them out and they'll tell you which one of these variants you're going to play. Uh, and there are several different types. So some of them any time that the two tiles match. So let's say um, you know, you played a five, or sorry, two sixes, both players played sixes, that their pieces would swap on the board. Um, there's one that says, if nothing stops your block, it slides all the way to the edge. And that's how the game is. You, you choose this, you can play uh, three separate games and play three separate variants, and that way there's a lot of variability to the game. It's really an interesting way to go about it, and it's a lot of fun. So as you can tell, I really enjoy this game. I'm not usually a huge abstract fan, as a matter of fact, of most of the abstracts that I've played, really the only ones that kind of kept my attention uh, have been Hive and a little bit Army of Frogs, but not nearly to the same level. This one, I think, has the potential to be at that Hive level. It has a short playing time, it's easy to understand, there's very few rules, and there's a ton of variants. And so, no matter how many times you play, I don't think it's going to get old. As a matter of fact, the first night that we had it, we got four games in, in a row. I lost three of them, but guess what? I got that final win, and that's all I was looking for, and I still wanted to play more. So with that said, I think that if you like abstract games, you should really check out Epigo. It's a really great game by a small publisher, and I think it's one that deserves to have a lot more attention than it's got right now. So check it out, buy it, you'll love it. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Ding.